Today we replaced the passenger side ABS-B control sensor on the 2017 Jeep Cherokee Trail Arc. No, it's not Christmas. These warning lights can drive you crazy. All of them are on at the same time. The engine, the parking, except the red brake which goes off when I disengage it. The traction, the ABS, all stay on while driving. Occasionally they go off while driving, but the next time I start the car they stay on again. My OBD scanner can't read any code. A friend scanner read U1412 code. If you look up the code it gives you the following. Faulty transmission control module. Transmission control module harness is open or shorted. Transmission control module circuit poor electrical connection. So that doesn't tell me anything. So I went to a shop where they have these sophisticated scanners and the issue is the ABS speed sensor from passenger side is bad. And here's the new part in which I'll put the link in the description. This will fit the 2015 to 2021 Jeep Cherokees all models including the Trailhawk submodels and it's the same part for the driver's side. You will see that installing the front speed sensor on these newer Jeep models is a breeze compared to the older models. After chucking the back wheels, we jack up the front passenger side wheel, place a jack under the lower arm, and then lower the jack, keeping pressure on it. Using a 19mm square socket on an impact gun, we take the lug bolts off the wheel. From 2015 models, Jeep has made many improvements, and one of them is the accessibility to the ABS speed sensor. You'll see what I mean. We start where the cable plugs into here in the wheel well. Follow the cable to the first grommet that holds the cable in place, the second grommet here, and then the third here. And then comes the speed sensor. Notice how easy to get to it. On the older models, the caliper and rotor had to come off because the sensor was under the rotor and on the other side of the mud guard here. This engineer had to have his brain linked to a mechanic when he made this modification. It definitely deserves a thumbs up. Okay, let's start by unplugging the cable by using a pick tool to release it. Then pull out the first grommet from the holding bracket. Before going any further, we start inserting the new cable to the first grommet holding bracket and place it in the same position as the old one. Continue to the second and third grommet and make sure the cable is routed the same way as the old one. This assures the cable will not rub on any moving suspension parts while driving. This clip that's not in the old one goes nowhere. It must be for the driver's side. Once we reach the sensor, we unbolt the old one using a 10 millimeter socket. If there's a lot of debris around it, it should be clean to avoid dirt from falling into the hole. Once the bolt is removed, you want to gently twist it both ways to get it loose. You want to avoid breaking it and the rest stays in the hole. That would be a bad thing. You can lube it if necessary, but not go overboard with it. Once it twists, you can carefully use a pick or small screwdriver to pry it. At the same time, you're turning and pulling it. Eventually, it will come out. Once it's removed, take the new sensor and slowly push it in. Make sure the hole is lined up. Insert the bolt and tighten it with a 10 millimeter socket and do not over tighten. Now we can plug in the socket, but we need to remove the old one clip to the wheel well first. Just insert in the pick into the square hole it clips into and pull it out. Now we can plug in the new one to the socket and clip it back on the wheel well. Double check all the grommets that they're in place. Then we need to start the engine and drive it. So the computer senses the new ABS speed sensor and it should turn off all the warning lights. So make sure your wheel is back on and torqued. 
take the jack stand out, lower the jack, and don't forget to take the chucks out of the back wheels. I turned on the engine and all the lights are still on, just as expected. As soon as I backed out of the driveway and put it in drive, all but the engine light came off. If that happens, plug in a NOBD2 scanner. Place the ignition to accessory without turning the engine on. Run the diagnostics. And then go to erase codes. Once the scanner acknowledges the codes have been erased, the engine light will still be on until you start the engine. And you'll notice the engine light turn off. And that's about it. Thank you for watching. I hope this video helped you along the way. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. See the description for links of tools and materials used in this video. And you all have a great day.